Happy New Year to everyone present here at this um, 95 Fenham Road, as well as um, those of you that are joining us on the webcast. May the Lord bless each and every one of you. Amen. We wish everyone a prosperous and a specially blessed New Year. Amen. We observed that the Lord has given us something so special to start the new year, and that is the Sunday school lesson of this morning. If God can help us to get grasp of the essence of that lesson, we can be sure of save throughout the year by the grace of God. So it has been decided by the ministry of this church that we are going to have an overview of that lesson again together before we go on our knees to pray, and that will be the mood of our devotional service for this morning. So for those of you joining from outside London, as well as the webcast audience, we pray that the Lord will bless you. Amen. But as we are just getting ready for that, let's sing together the traditional, O oh God, our help in ages past, hymn number 642, from our, from our CGS, we're just going to take three verses, one, two, and the last. Then we're going to stand up on verse three, and then we shall be led in prayer. Brian Isaac will come forward to lead us in prayer. We take verses one, two, and the last of 642. Okay, let's pray, please. Oh, Lord, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege you've given us again at the beginning of this year. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to see the new year. We thank you for the past year. We are thanking you in anticipation of what we know you have in store for us for the new year. Father, accept our thanks. Oh, Lord, accept our praises. You love us so much. And we see this every time, more especially as you are promising us something special for this year. You're going to make this year a unique year. You're going to make this year a blessed year. You're going to make this year a year of promotion. You're going to make this year a year of progress. You're going to make this year a year when we withdraw nearer and nearer to you. Do this for us, O oh Lord. Amen. And you are giving us the secret. You are giving us the formula that we can follow in order to be so close to you and be what you want us to be. Do this for us, O oh Lord, even as we gather together all around uh, uh, the whole world, even at this time, and those that are watching us, those that are taking part in this service, we look up to you. We know you fill the whole earth. We know you are everywhere. We know as you are blessing here, you can bless 
everywhere. Father, please send your spirit to teach us, to help us. And at the end, Lord, we just want to be sure that we are starting well, that we are starting with you. And if we start with you, we know you will give us all the fortification needed to continue with you. And of course, in the end, to finish the race with you. Thank you for everything as we pray in Jesus' mighty name. They are district superintendent for West Africa, that is Brother Barry Adenio and the original overseer, uh, Brother Dylan George, as well as our superintendent general of this work worldwide, uh, Brother Darren Lee. They all got in touch with me to express their appreciation of what you have done. I don't have their uh, um, emails to me here, but I have all their emails coming to say that let the London you know, you know what? When we were doing this in Nigeria, as I went there, and the Brabayo started by talking about London, I said, don't let this go over the world. Now I'm making the same mistake again. It's not London. It is the Apostolic Faith Mission of UK that made that donation. So it's not um, London. So anyway, they said that we should um, show forth the appreciation of what the Lord has helped you to do. Brother General uh, and myself were present at that dedication and many overseers and pastors and ministers, they were so happy that God provided that for them. Um, you can watch or see the organ if you are yet to see it on their website, and that is www.apostolicfaith.org. Apostolicfaith.org. Um, if you need to see that organ, if you have not seen it before. I need to let you know that um, the Board of Trustees of this church earmarked £30,000 for that project, out of which um, the individual donation contributed about £4,580. May the Lord bless each and every one of you for your generous donation. Actually, they pray for you. You know what? I was in the prayer room when I was at Ikotewang, and of course, the, the, the news was first given to the ministers and workers there, and you need to see the, uh, the, 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 the uh, amount of prayer just going up for you. A minister was by my side and was just saying, all the UK saints, all the UK saints that did this and that did that. And the Lord is going to answer that prayer. Amen. It isn't that we haven't got our own need. I, I did give a report that we have our own need too, but God put that in our heart and God made us to do it. Actually, out of what the Lord has given us, we did. So we didn't do anything. That's what I told them. But they are really praying for you, and the Lord will bless you for that. Well, I also brought another need before the, this church, um, and that is the Kasane uh, uh, Church in Botswana, um, that they needed some things. And God blessed abundantly. You donated generously. You know when they told me all those things that we needed to do, they gave me the amount in their local currency, you donated more than what they needed. Amen. And that is wonderful. Uh, the superintendent general from the um, headquarters in Portland was informed, of course, and he has sent his greetings as well and his appreciation, as well as their country overseer, uh, Reverend Lodic, and of course, Brother Motabani. Brother Motabani is not a pastor there. He's actually not attending that branch but he's the one that we are connecting with that is helping us there. So uh, Brad Motabani is reporting to us every time about how the work um, is progressing. So I just want to see that opportunity for all of you, members of the Apostolic Faith Mission UK, wherever you are located, God will bless you for all that you have done in that instance. Well, for our Southern Africa brethren, I say siabonga unkulunku. To our Econ Enwan region saints, I say Abasi Sonson or Etieti. And to all others, I say thank you, thank God very much. He has done all things well, and we praise his holy name. God bless you all. Okay, let's have um, another song together. Let's have one more song before I go into this uh, review. Let's take number 170, and I want you to apply your heart to the words of this song. We're using tune 467, tune 
467, and the song itself is 170. It's a wonderful song that I want you to apply your heart to um, as we sing this song that tallies or goes very well with um, our um, study. My God, my Father, while I stray far from my home, on life's rough way, teach me from my heart to say, Thy will be done. Amen. If thou should call me to resign, what most I prize, it never was mine, I only yield thee what is thine. Then when on earth I breathe no more, the prayer, oft mixed with tears before, I sing upon a happier shore, thy will be done.
was um, coming to the church this morning and um, on BBC World Service, they were looking at one program that has to do with New Year resolution and they were asking people and some people were replying. They were saying so many things about their New Year resolution. One or two caught my attention. Someone said, um, my New Year resolution is no spending on clothing, shopping for the next six months. And then they spoke to another young person I could deduce from the um, tone of voice of that little boy or girl. I can't remember very well what the um, voice depicts. Anyway, and this um, young person said, my New Year resolution is I must cut down on my gaming. And then the interviewer was saying, how much gaming do you do? He said, he lost. And I was thinking about that, that um, for we, God's children, what should be our New Year resolution? Will it not be wonderful if we can all say my New Year resolution is God's will to be done? You see, when I was particularly going through this lesson ever before we got to the week of studying the lesson, I believe the Spirit of God put it in my heart that um, this is where our problems lie, even as God's children, self-denial. And that maybe we can decide that this year, by the special grace of God, is going to be a year of consecration. It's going to be a year of practical self-denial. Perhaps many of us know it very well. I'm surely we do. See your fantastic contribution to the lesson this morning. So it's not going to be a year of just knowledge. It's going to be a year of application. A practical year when we will put everything into sure practice. Well, and as I was doing that, I was studying my Bible along with it, and we're going to look into that in a minute, the life of Abraham, which uh, we touched upon during the course of our study. And I did not tell any of the people, for us here in London on the 31st, we had some of our people coming up here to conduct uh, prayer meetings uh, that we had for the, night, for the prayer vigil. And for those who are present, you will agree with me that everything focused on the blessing of God. Am I right? Yes. Everything, the blessing of God. You know, I was tongue-tied. Tongue-tied in the sense that I have prepared my note well before that day for today, centered on the blessing of God. And on that prayer meeting, everything was just the blessing of God, the blessing of God, the blessing of God. And I want to believe that that is not just sheer coincidence. I believe God truly plan to bless you. He plan to bless me, especially this year. Amen. And is revealing to you and me the greatest of all the obstacles. And that is self-denial. Let's open to the book of Genesis chapter 22. I read from verse 15. Genesis 22 from verse 15. Verse 15, and the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, continue please, I want you to follow, because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, 17, that in blessing. I, 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 I stopped there when I was studying the scripture. You know, there is a way we say certain things. You know when you tell somebody that, is it this what you want? Is that, is that the kind of thing you need? That in blessing, whatever you want to put in that, that in blessing, I will bless thee. Amen. And in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed Amen. as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the sea shore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Verse 18. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. 
God is going to bless us this year. Amen. God is going to multiply. Amen. You know, God's multiplication is not man's multiplication. Part of the thing I had uh, uh, is about this thing that they want to start in schools now about um, getting the little ones to uh, go back to their multiplication table and things like that. Where for man, two times two equals what? Four. You know, for God, his own mathematics is different. So when God is talking of multiplication, you better don't joke with it because it's not a small thing. It doesn't mean that what you have will just be times two or even times four. Just leave that definition to God and he will sort it out. Imagine God swearing by his own name when the Bible says that he could not swear by any other. Who is greater than God? No one. And God now decided just simply because one man did something. God decided to swear by, with his own name. You know, the writer of Hebrews put it um, very succinctly. In Hebrews, um, um, I believe, chapter 6, verse 14, they are about talking about surely. The writer of Hebrews put the word surely. When God cannot, if you read from uh, verse 12 to 14 downward, you will see that God was saying, the writers of Hebrews were saying that God could not find any other person. And God wanted to make it so sure, so specific, so real to Abraham, and then he decided to swear by his own name that he will bless Abraham. God will surprise you this year. Yeah. It's the prayer of one of our ministers. He has said that he used the word, God will embarrass you with blessing. God will embarrass you with blessing. You, you know, when, when, you are, when, when you get something and you, you yourself, you open your mouth, you can't close your mouth, and you are wondering, how did this come about? That is what the Lord is going to do for us this year. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, he will surprise us with bountiful blessings, our life, the, our family, all that we're in contact with, unquantifiable blessing, lavish blessing. The Lord is going to pour out upon us this year. Well, you know what? Opens to Deuteronomy 28 to quickly share some of those, just to quickly share very few, just a tip of the iceberg of that blessing is what is contained here that I want to quickly read to you. Genesis 28 from verse 2. And all these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake thee. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, blessed shall thou be in the city, and blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, an increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come up against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thy hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself, as he hath sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. And all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. Amen. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, Amen. and in the fruit of thy body, Amen. and in the fruit of thy cattle, Amen. and in the fruit of thy ground, Amen. in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. Amen. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, Amen. the heaven to give thee rain unto thy land in the season, and to bless all the work of thy hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head, and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If that thou akin unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day, to observe and to do them. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day to the right hand or to the left to go after other gods to serve them. What a catalog of blessing. Don't you want that blessing? And that is only a tip of the iceberg. 
God has more in store that is going to bestow in a special way upon you, upon your family, upon me, upon my family, and all other things, all, all other people that we are in contact with. In the name of Jesus. Amen. But then God said about Abraham, Verse 16, because thou hast done this thing, what did Abraham do? That is where we are going. What did Abraham do? We are talking about self-denial. Because thou hast done this thing, what did Abraham do? What did Abraham do? Let me introduce that, and I want you to watch this little drama. In it? Right here? Here. Yeah. That's a little demonstration of what we do up till now. Perhaps many people, we are at tug of war with God. And if we do what that small boy, you know, in it, how old is that boy? Raphael is over 70. I actually use that in terms of age and height and everything and power and strength. That is what we do, like in it, that small boy, when we are pulling something with God and we will never win anyway. We are wasting our time anyway. The earlier, he may recognize that if I keep on doing this, uh, uh, this man is not moving. I am the only one just struggling here. I better give it up, surrender. May God make this year a year of surrender. Amen. I don't know what you have been pulling with the Lord. That is what this lesson is all about. After you have been pulling and pulling and you will not let go, what have you gained? Why can't you say this year, no more, no more war, no more trouble, no more issue. God, I hand over to you. And you see what the Lord will do. In, um, in this country, for those of us that drive, you get to a place, for us to even pass our driving test, you have this sign, give way. I think I love the word that is used to depict the same thing in America. And that word is yield. So that, is, that really explains it very well. You know when you get to a place and then yielding simply means give up your right. <laughs> give up your right. Yeah. You know you're driving, you get to one place, when you see yield, it simply means give up your right. Until that is finished, then you can go. For us, yeah, perhaps when we get to a roundabout, um, um, some people even don't care anyway. You, should, you know you should stop, and I should stop too, of course. But because, of course, when we see that the road is clear, when we get to a roundabout, we just go like that. But when it is yield, you must stop. You have to stop. You give up your right to God. That's where I'm going. Let us make this year a year of yielding. Amen. A year of yielding on every ground, on every count. That's what Abraham did. He denied himself. You know, Abraham put aside logic. We have many people. They, 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 they like something that is logical. And when something is not logical, it doesn't make sense. They will not accept it. Such people will find it hard to serve God. Some people will find it hard to obtain anything from God. When you are dealing with God, forget reason. Because I, I, what is even, what are you reasoning with? Is it this little brain compared with God himself? That's exactly what Abraham did. He put aside logic, put aside reasoning. You know, as Abraham, as we all know very well, Abraham passed that test of waiting. Did he not? Waiting for the Lord, for this special son, and God gave. And when Abraham now thought, hallelujah, the son of laughter is here. I am delivered. 
I thank God. I praise God. As he was just enjoying the fulfillment of God's promise upon his life. Verse 2 of that um, chapter 22 says, When God called upon him, and God said, he said, Take now, watch those words. Take now thy son, thy only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest. You just stop there. God knows that Abraham loved Isaac so much. Abraham was a special child. The adoration, the love, the joy. Then came this seemingly strange order. I don't know what the Lord has been asking of you, and it's very strange. If it is the Lord, stop struggling. If it is the Lord, put an end to that talk of war. If it is something that is in agreement with the word of God, the earlier you submit, the better. We don't want to suffer again in 2016. And God is going to deliver us from such suffering. Amen. You want to just say, God, you know how much I love this. And God knows. God knows you love it. That's what God was saying here. Whom thou lovest. You know, in my Bible here, you know, God was repeating. Thy only son. He said that in verse 2. He said, thy only son. When you get to verse 16, he said the same thing. Thy only son. And he was just saying, thy only son. Thy only son. In verse 12, he said the same thing. Thy only son. And truly, that was the only son. And perhaps you have been praying for something and God has answered your prayer. And as you are just finishing, amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. God give you another lash. Self-denial. Let us look at this self-denial very carefully. Many of us are making sacrifices that do not cost us anything. That's not the sacrifice we are talking about here. You are doing what you love to do and you think you are making sacrifice. That is not sacrifice. Sacrifice here yeah, is what costs you something. Some of the things that have happened in our church, there, was a there is a lady still in the church, a lady who told me when we were trying to make some contribution for during the time we were buying the churches and many other things, and we're trying to arrange something. Some of you, as members of this church, you will remember that. And she came to me to say that I've been saving this money to buy a car for a long time, and now the church, uh, when, they had their, when we had saints meeting, I'm going to give out all this money. Uh, you know why I'm bold to say this? Because number one, this lady is not a worker, and up till now, she's not a worker. So it's not the question of saying it because I want pastor to make me a worker. And she's still in this church, and she's not a worker. And she came, and she put everything down. Well, I can see that she's now riding a car. Amen. What is it that the Lord is asking of you? May God teach us the joy of giving. Especially, I'm not talking of the one of helping this and helping that. That has its own place. I'm talking of the one that we caught you. We caught you. Not long after we announced here about Kasane Church. You know, we, we, we are kneeling down on carpets here. Yeah. And of course, it's not only Kasane Church, many other churches here and there. And I came back with a report that is gravel. I went there. I was there. It was gravel with mat. And some of you here, I said, we need to do something. Go put it in my heart. And I brought it here. I, can, I, I was so surprised in terms of what was coming in for them and then one day we were counting money there and somebody they found, no, no, no name or anything is attached, a thousand pounds just to give to, that nearly covered everything that Kasane Church needed. And I was wondering, that person could have thought of spending that money for something else, isn't it? And perhaps we have somebody here that God is saying, even from that your five pounds, go and give me one pound. But you know that giving one pound, <laughs> I won't eat. You will eat and have extra. Amen. Have you tried God like that? We are talking of something that cost us something. We are not talking of something that, well, out of 50,000, you give 1,000. So what? You don't even know 1,000 has left 50K anyway. 
That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking of the one that you feel it. You, know, you understand what I'm trying to say? Something that you really feel that, yes, because God asked me to do this, and I've done it, now this thing is painful, you know, to the body. That's the kind of thing that I'm talking about. May God help us to yield. Amen. Now, you know what God now said? When Abraham now did that immediately, without any argument, he rose up early in the morning, he had to travel for more than about three days to get to that place. Verse 12 is encouraging. Verse 12 says, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him, for now I know. I underline that. God saying of man, for now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son. God was just repeating thy only son from me. For now I know. You know, we can have resolution that this year I want God to have a testimony of me. And God to say, for now I know. This is God that is all knowing. But he's now saying, now, 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 now. I know you before, but now I know. Will, will, will you do something? Will you, will you consecrate and, and, and deny yourself or that which will touch the heart of God like that? For God to say, for now I know, may we yield to him. Amen. May we do something that will cause him to say that to us. And because of this is self-denier, do you know his descendants? The Jews today are blessed in a special way. Yeah. In a special way. Because God has sworn. You know, for all our descendants, all our children, all our family members, we can cause God to even appear to us and swear. And tell you that, no, 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 you know what? This I will do for you and I swear by my name. You know, we can do something that can touch the heart of God like that. May God help us. Amen. This is not a joke. We can yield to God to that extent. And of course, he says in thee, all the nations of the earth, because of Abraham, you and I, today. I want to see Abraham. May you desire to see Abraham too, by the grace of God. We can see that when we yield our life to God, the blessing is immeasurable. We want to make sacrifice that cost us something. And may this year be that year. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. a year of surrender, a year of yielding completely to God. What is God asking from you? Give it all up. Give it all up. Give it all up. Give it all up. Yes, we are talking of self. We are not talking of others. That thing that you cherish so much, we have many works to do in the gospel and cannot be done, honestly speaking, truly, because we don't have dedicated people that we deny themselves of everything that we make them to be available and fit for purpose for that job to be done. Won't you say, no, 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 this year is going to be a different year for me. I'm going to fit myself into God's plan, come what may. And the Lord is going to help us when we have a decision like that. That's why we want to start this year in, a spe in, a, in this type of special way that we are doing. For some people, even to be a worker in the church, there are certain standards that are set for workers in our church, just as they have in other churches. All churches have their standards and policies. And some will rather say, no, I don't want to be a worker in the church. I better keep on to my own personal standard. What, what, what is that? You're pulling that with God? God's word will continue to go ahead, but we will be suffering. We will be losing. And perhaps many of us even, we prioritize certain things that we qualify to be blessing. And we don't know, that's not the kind of blessing we are talking about here. You know, God has given you, um, the wife has a car, the husband has a car, perhaps grown up children in the family, they've got their own cars. You have two or three houses, you're living in one, two or three or four or five or ten or even extra one, they're bringing in money for you, good health, fantastic, well-paid job, and all those things. Tell me, which of those, which of those 
when it's time for you and I to be lowered <laughs> into that horrible pit, dark, alone, which of those will go with you there? And then you say you are blessed. I'm blessed. The blessing that God is talking about here is not just physical. It's not just material. It is that blessing that when you are put in that pit, you are even already watching and rejoicing and happy. The blessing of God that would not add any sorrow. That is the blessing that God is talking about here. So what is that thing that God is saying, give up? You can't keep simple standard of the gospel just because of what you like, what you want to do, how you want to do it, what you think is, and you don't care what anybody says. You don't care what, that's their own interpretation. Now that's what we hear. You know, in our memory verse, it says that, and that, 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 that's great Paul, who said, neither count I my life dear. Did you think about that? Is it not because you are counting your life to be something? That's why you cannot give that thing up. Somebody is saying, neither count my life is not dear to me because of Christ. And then they say that even Christ, he did not please himself. Is it not because you want to please yourself? Is it not time for you, for heaven's sake, to say no? 2016 is a new year. It's, a, it's going to be a year of total surrender. Whatever name anybody wants to call me, whatever label anybody wants to give me, I just want to do that with the Bible say. I just want to obey that with the Bible say. I just want to obey if it's parents. I spoke to parents even just this morning. I saw something that um, troubled my heart um, with one of their kids. And then when I spoke to them and then they explained to me the situation of things and this and that, I said, you have done your part. Parents, God is going to help you. Amen. Continue to do your part. Amen. Heaven has a record of your part that you are playing. If anyone now thinks I'm so big, I cannot obey my parent again. I have my own interpretation of the Bible. Or I cannot even obey those that have authority over me again. You have done your own part. But I want to encourage and beg and plead with anyone in that situation, maybe a young person, maybe an adult, I think it's time you give it up. Don't you think so? It's time you give it up. It's time you say, no, I'm now surrendered to God. I now want to be what God really wants me to be. And God is going to help us. So it is my prayer that this year that God has purpose for us as a year of progress as a year of promotion, as a year of blessing, that I will not miss out on it, that you will not miss out on it. Many examples were given this morning. In terms of some people, evening service is no-go area. They come for morning service. Who wouldn't like to just get up in the morning or perhaps in the evening and put on your... Uh, um, uh, um, your pajamas or whatever, and a cup of tea, and sit down and put your laptop on and be watching service. That's service, isn't it? Who wouldn't want to do that? Is that not easy? As compared to getting into your car, dressing up, or getting a bus, I'm going to the church. I will go to the church, I will pray with, the, with God's children, I will get the blessing of God, even when there are other means of doing it. And God has given you the, the, the better means when you are there. Sacrifice that costs something. We don't come, some will not come even for Sunday school. Some will come for Sunday school, perhaps they just go out, and that is all they do. I think this insulting attitude to God should be buried. And we should change. And say, God is New Year. I am changing. I want to be what you want me to be. Whatever you want me to pay, I will pay. Some people, God, I heard this morning, some people, God may even ask them to resign. It's in that song. That song is composed by people that have gone through thick and things. God may ask you to resign, perhaps, maybe to go somewhere or even to move somewhere, but be sure it is God. And that may be very difficult, but when you do so, you will be amazed. 
what the Lord will do in your life. It is my prayer, again, that this year we are going to draw near to God, yeah. and he will surely draw near unto us. Yeah. Yes, we have had so many examples that um, have been given, and I have decided to share with you other examples so that we will know that it's not just only in, uh, in the days of the apostles, but even in our own days, that people are making sacrifice for this work. And then you can ask yourself as we are starting the new year, what am I doing? With all that the Lord has done for me, what is it that I'm doing? If it is to jump up and testify for salvation, for sanctification, for Holy Ghost baptism, perhaps you are number one. Or you are ready to say anything. But what are you doing? We have here. This is um, by, um, it's a book, and of course, please, if you log on to the Apostolic Faith website, the international headquarters, you can gain access to a copy of this. This is the second general overseer of the Apostolic Faith work worldwide. After the founder, the founder was his mom that passed on, and the touch of this work was passed on to Brother Ray, as he's often called. And I have his memoir here, in terms of what these people went through for you and I to be enjoying what we are enjoying today. I, I, I will read some of this to, you, to your hearing. He was saved in 1908, and then he made restitution. And then it is written that from the beginning of his Christian work, he knew that the preaching of the gospel was a definite call upon his life. He began to work on improving his abilities in a variety of areas so that his service to the Lord might be more profitable. Start thinking. Start thinking. What are you working on? I used to be a university lecturer and part of my job as a tutor also, as well as career counselor, is when people come to us, these young people, these 18 to 21, or even doing masters 22 or what. Um, uh, and then they want to seek advice about what to do. We check on their ability. We check on what they want to do. And then we look at the job market. I dare not use the Bible and say, well, you, this is what the Bible says. You have to go and pray and know God's will. No. The, 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 the pattern is there. You look at the job market. Brother Ray did not look at the job market. He looked at what God wants. Young people, is that what you look at? When you are choosing anything, does it occur to you to say, how can I be of help in the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ? That's what he did. In any area that his service to the Lord might be more profitable, he felt that he should attend a business college just because of the gospel. And um, the courses he took in business education and secretarial work were an asset to him later in his church responsibilities. Um, he took courses in both air and sea navigation. He was thinking of evangelism. And that's why he decided to go for that, uh, for missionary work. Musically talented, Brother Ray studied voice, voice, piano, string, and brass instruments, and became a capable musician. You want to be a musician? Take example of Brother Ray. He occasionally played trombone, solos, and sometimes performed on a string instrument with others in special combination. For about 25 years, of course, he was the conductor of the church orchestra and then later part-time director. He spent much time with volunteer groups of dedicated musicians, instructing them as they practiced more advanced music and encouraging them to continue their private lessons and musical training. Now you, we have concerts here. And for those of you who have seen concerts in Nigeria, and I've seen this, in, now I can see different parts of Nigeria, I've seen this, and also in Southern Africa, I've seen it, and the little that we are doing here, it all started with this man who decided that music should be given a priority. Well, when you see music being played, what is going on in your heart, especially young people? Doesn't something telling you that, no, 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 I need to give my time. I need to do something. I need to learn something. Not so that people will see you, but because you just want to do something for God. That's what he did. In those days, accommodations were not so um, elaborate and comfortable. But yet, he was going from one place to the other and um, spreading the gospel. Uh, um, on, on bad roads, we have air, 
The training for this work began in 1919 when he enrolled in the School of Aeronautics. That's what he did because he wanted to become a licensed pilot. And if you don't know, in our church, when our church started, we have, the, God bless them, they actually bought uh, uh, um, uh, um, aircraft called the Sky Pilot from where Brother Ray will be preaching, from where Brother Ray will be distributing tracts. We, we read of great men of God in the Bible, and we thank God for that. But these are people that lived in our time in terms of what they did. Sometimes things happen in life that do not make sense. Brother Ray experienced that. And some of these are, are mentioned here. How he fell down 400 feet to the ground. But God healed him. That's what is contained in his memoir. God came down, come came down in power and healed me instantly. Amen. On finishing his training, then the Apostle of Faith purchased a, a plane uh, that I mentioned, the Sky Pilot. Traveling in winter weather, they passed through some treacherous air currents on their 2,500 mile flight. Uh, low hanging clouds and many things that happened to them, but God saw them through. But that's Brother Ray. And now, in, it's towards the end of his life, as general overseer, it was necessary for Brother Ray to do a considerable amount of traveling, and his trips in the latter years were facilitated, were facilitated through the use of the church plane. Some of his comments that he made are this. This is the time to square our shoulders, hold up over our chin, so to speak, and take our stand for the word of God. God save us from compromise or from looking back to the things of the world. The true pilgrim en route to that promised city is not mindful of what is behind. Let us keep our eyes looking forward and in the strength of the Lord press on. As the song says, be strong, O men, be strong. We are not here to faint. We are not here to facilitate. We are not here to lay down our arms, show the white flag, and surrender our principles and standards. We are not here to do that. No, with exclamation mark there. Let us be true soldiers of the cross. Keep on the firing line. I love to think of the gospel as progressive, militant, and determined. That is the kind of religion that we conquer for Christ. The Christian must face the foe and fight the good fight of faith if he is to finish this race with joy. Not everyone who starts in this race finishes. And only he who crosses the tape wins the prize. Let us go forward with a persistency that knows no defeat. And by the grace of God, we will overcome and gain that crown of eternal life. Remember, this Christian race is not a hundred yard dash. It is an endurance race that continues through life. And only he that endureth to the end shall be saved and wear the victor's crown. Well, uh, the, the, he knew about sickness. While in Honolulu, he suffered heart attack. Such a great man of God. He suffered heart attack. And as time went by, God healed him. And then later, um, the, the sickness uh, continued until Brother Ray served for 56 years. And his service was abundantly rewarded. Mm -hmm. During a career crowded with Christian activities, his heart cry to become a, far, a fisher of men had been answered. And he lived to see the fulfillment of some of these, some of his greatest desires in the advancement of the work of evangelism. You, 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 you just think, what is it that you are doing that God is asking you to give up? People have given it up and the Lord has rewarded them. And the Lord will reward you too. Amen. The gospel that you and I are enjoying today. Are we not enjoying it? Yes. I am enjoying it. And I'm not saying that. I've said that many times. Not because I'm a pastor. I'm enjoying it. And when I read about the life of people like this. All that they paid for it. You want to say God help me. I'm ready to surrender. I'm ready to pay anything that you want me to pay. I will share with you one or two more testimony. Let's stand up to sing. Hymn number 168. 
O Savior Christ, come down to me. Help me, O Lord, with grace divine. Expel the love of the world in me. Prepare a place for thee. The way that my blessed Savior trod, with all haste I will seek and find. As long as I am here on earth, I desire no other good thing. I will bid farewell to the world, his deceits, fancies, and dreams. May God help us to do that. We are standing up to sing verses 1, 2, 3, and 7, and 8. Verses 1, 2, 3, and 7, and 8. 168. We stand up to sing, please. Seated, please. Brother Ray, may God give us more Brother Ray. Amen. Then we have another man. It is called the man with a vision. This is the founder. This is the one God used in Africa. We call him Brother T. Not even Reverend T. It's Brother T well known as Brother T, the one that God used. He also went through things that you cannot imagine, all for the sake of Christ. I know we are now in advanced countries and perhaps 
we may not be able to create sin and um, go through the kind of thing that they went through, but I know God has one thing or the other for you and I, that God expects us to go through. That which will make you to use your mouth, that you just say, I have my mouth, but I will not use it. That's self-denial. Railing accusation on you, talking about you, saying things, mm -mm, I leave that vengeance to God. Or is it that, I, 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 you know some people say, I have mouth. When some people are talking, they say, you think I too don't have mouth? You know, for a true child of God, you know you have mouth, but your mouth is now God's mouth. Amen. So you can't just use it anyhow. If he, she wants to use his own or her own anyhow, let him continue. We are talking of self-denial. Something that you have the power to do, and you say, no, I'm not doing it. I will leave that to God. That's the kind of thing that happened with the case of Reverend T or Brother T. There's a lot yeah, in terms of what they went through, how God saved him, how this, uh, the humble beginning in the sitting room of this work in Africa that has gone here and there. You can read this uh, uh, book uh, about um, what happened uh, with uh, Reverend Sanana from um, um, Zambia, and then you have um, Brother Senwayo uh, from Zimbabwe, and all those things when transportation was not as convenient as now, all the way from West Africa. That, that's the kind of thing that you went through. And you and I, now they said, uh, give up that your white shoe and be wearing black shoe. Not me. God didn't tell me. I don't want to do. You give up this. All the, just all those trivial things that would not matter. He was a humble man of God with unshakable faith in his... Um, in, his, uh, in the kind of thing that he does. He was dedicated, deeply consecrated, and full of self-denial. He threw himself into the fray of the gospel, not minding the cost. He was a mighty soul winner. He was a talented teacher and preacher. He taught and preached the word with authority and lived by it. He was a stalwart soldier <coughs> of the cross. It was written in his memoir here, he was very scrupulous, that is rigorous, dependable on church businesses. Anything to do with church business, he doesn't joke with it. In rain and sunshine, in season and out of season, he was at work. He often expressed his wishes to die on active service for the Lord. And indeed, God graciously um, considered his desire. He was a Christian of strong principles, a faithful watchman of the gospel standard and an ardent keeper of the policy and method of the apostolic faith work. As a good disciplinarian, he himself was a well-disciplined man. From his total commitment to the Lord's work, before his death, he willed his house. He willed his own house. Brother T had children, and he willed his own house. He willed his house at number 35, Isaac John Street, Ibobi Yaba, in Nigeria, to the Apostolic Faith Organization, the church he loved, worked, and died for. Then he was sick, the point of death. But as, a, as he was a man who was always busy, busy at his father's work, God came down. That was in 1977. God came down and healed him miraculously. And then he had a stroke in 1981. The God of miracles healed him completely. Amen. Then late Reverend Morgan Senwai of Zimbabwe, with his wife and four children, they came to Lagos camp meeting. Um, during that time, it was a very pleasant and exciting surprise for Brother T to meet his convert, Brother Senwai, whom he suddenly left behind on his trip to South Africa in 1955 because of the sudden news of Reverend Van der Poy death. In return, Brother T and his team went to the camp meeting in Zimbabwe in December 1981, and they returned in January 1982. Brother T was preparing to go to Liberia in March 82. News came to Reverend Senwai, news came that Reverend Senwai died in Zimbabwe. Brother T led a team of ministers to participate in the burial. 
This happened to be his last trip outside Nigeria before he died. Then he fell ill again. You see, these people that used all their life for the Lord, they experienced situations too. He fell ill, and I was, I was about to leave Nigeria that year. He fell ill in 1983, and this lesson is running here and there. However, he actively continued with his work of administration, counseling, and correspondence, and receiving of visitors. By the special grace of God, I am one of the visitors. When I was leaving Nigeria in 1983, his deputy for him, that time Reverend Shoyinka, actually asked me to go and see him. I went to him personally to let him know that I'm leaving. I passed my musical instrument under him, having done it for about four or five times, and things like that. So I, I could see his condition. You could see that this is somebody that has been spent for the Lord. I was just, you, you, you just need to see him. That time I saw him myself. He opened the first meeting uh, um, for the camp meeting and was present for a few meetings during the camp meeting of that year. Coming back home, he reviewed his will. It was in that reviewed will that he surrendered his buildings. His buildings. 53, Isaac John wrote a letter of encouragement to the board of trustees knowing that he was going away, he named Reverend Joe Shoyinka as his uh, uh, as successor. He was confident and as mentally alert as ever. Yes, I saw that. I saw that myself. He never missed his early morning devotions for a day. And then the home call, uh, before his death, he had to beg some ministers to stop praying for him so that God might allow him to go home. And his last day on earth was filled with activities. Very early in the morning of that day, he was busy receiving visitors. Have you seen somebody, if I'm sick now, obviously the, 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 the issue is, just like you too, don't, don't disturb him. Don't go to him. But not this man. He walked to the last, still receiving visitors. And late in the night, he consoled and counseled a minister who lost one of his parents. This somebody who was sick, sick at home. And by 10 p.m. on that day, he prayed with the four ministers he had invited and um, bid them good night. And then three hours later, at about 1.10 a.m. on Wednesday, 16 November 1983, he breathed his last breath and went home to meet his Savior. Thus ended the life of a man of vision, and he died on active service as he had wished. Are you going to die on active service or you die on pleasure service? There's a lot to learn from his life. His theology, it's good to still hear from that because from somebody's theology, you can learn something about their life. He taught women not to be conformed to the fashions of this world, but to dress modestly, to cover, them, to cover their shame as becoming godly women, soon apostolic faith women are known by their godly, neat, and simple appearance. May we keep that standard. Amen. There were those who were opposed by their families and their unbelieving relations, especially when they refused to follow the fashion in vogue, but the Christian women took their stand and would not join the bandwagon of the worldly. Adorning the hair or body or dresses were left to the ungodly, while they concerned themselves with the adornment of a meek and a quiet spirit. Uh, some other quotations were given here in his memoir. This is the type of things to which we are called. Here he was talking of the Bible that we are reading today, uh, what people went through before we can have the Bible. Now he's saying, we do not need to keep doing something which will catch the eye of the public. That's what many people want to do today, isn't it? People must see me that I'm a worker. People must see me that this is what I'm doing. When what you are doing, God just wants you to be in the secret. Because that is the one the Lord will reward. Those people in their time and age have sown their seed on the sea and they are surely going to reap it. It may be God endows you with some finance and you begin to wonder what you are going to do with the money. And you finally say, I better expend it upon my children. After all, I must give them sound education. Yes, you will give them sound education, 
but they will not believe the Bible, and that will be your own problem. For many years now, we have, came, uh, uh, we have been receiving literature and tracts uh, for distribution in our country, talking now about U.S. and how um, um, a minister's problem solved. You remember his name? The brother that worked on this Sunday school book? I forgot the name now. He was talking of him. I didn't mention the name, but he was talking about him now, and he was saying that um, he has done everything to get all this uh, a booklet for us and everything for us. He was actually challenging in his memoir the uh, uh, our Igbo and Efik people. That was far back then. Now, of course, things have changed. But far back then, he would be challenging people. You know your language. Why must you not translate this to Igbo? Why must this not be translated to Efik so that um, uh, village people, everybody can hear? And he challenged people, and people responded. And then talking about other uh, veterans, yeah, like Brother Inyang and all those people that um, uh, uh, submitted to God, we must realize, this is a quotation, we must realize that the gospel is a gospel of reproach. And we should not be afraid of what people will say. If your consecration or your self-denial is making you to be afraid of what your parents will say, what your children will say, what your friend will say, or that T is in heaven now in his reward, is advising you, don't worry. A lot of other groups will campaign against us that we do not do this or that. Are they not doing that truly? But in spite of their reproach, God will add to us. Amen. Has God not been adding to us yes. in spite of all the reproaches? If we do not give up saying the truth, but we continue to preach and live it and stand firm in the gospel, God will back us up. Amen. If we follow Christ, Christ himself will make others to follow us. Those are some of the sins of Brother T. Um, the Lord is making you to realize that this is taken from his sermon, sermonette of vow. The Lord is making you to realize that you should honor him with all your possessions, all your treasures and riches without any exception. Out of all these things which God has given to you, with what have you honored him? Which of them have you taken before God in line with the examples of Hannah and Abraham? People who honor God with their substance are those who have made a covenant with God by sacrifice. That day we, that day we done when God will gather them together unto himself. May we be among those that God will gather together unto himself. Finally, I have a testimony. I know of um, a, teenage, a teenager who decided that um, he didn't have good education or right, and then a time came when he had the opportunity to uh, learn musical instrument, and as he was learning that musical instrument, um, this young boy who got saved at the, as a teenager uh, decided that um, a challenge was given you either learn your musical instrument or you go back to school by the choir director. Um, and then this young man went on his knees and prayed to God, now that I have opportunity to go back to school, school must wait. This is my musical instrument first. That young man continued learning that instrument and he continued, he thought it's something that he would finish within a year or two, but no, he didn't uh, uh, really do anything uh, much until about four to five years when God answered. But you know, immediately God answered and he learned that instrument and he passed that instrument. It's like a flood gate open of opportunities and provisions. Somebody that could not be sent to school, secondary school, God opened the way for that young person. God gave him his master's. God gave him his PhD. God gave him job without applying for job. God did so many things for him that you cannot even just enumerate. This young man was in charge of some research projects that he had so many research grants all flowing in from British Council, from so many places that he was managing and he was enjoying himself, enjoying his job. He was working 
towards his professorship. He was working in the university where the wife, too, was working. And so two of them were working for a university. And then something happened in the course of that um, submission to what God has given them as they are enjoying themselves that changed the course of their life, but for better. I have a letter here with me that was written to that young man that changed the course of their life. That letter came from Portland, Oregon headquarters from our um, superintendent general then, Brother Dwight Botzell. Even though you have apparently been successful in your business matters, and God apparently has blessed you in that regard, I trust that your first purpose of heart always is to have God's will in your life, to be always used for his purpose, however he will see fit. When this young man received this letter, he was surprised. He has never got in touch or in contact with Brother Dwight before in Portland. No communication whatsoever. Actually, the letter was addressed and sent to his universities. Even his name was misspelled on that letter. But anyway, the question continues. My question to you is this, and this is what changed the course of his life. My question to you is this. Should the time come for your pastor to retire from pastor, will you, will you be able to fill his place there as pastor? This may or may not come to you quite a shock. Believe me, I have been there. I know what it is to, I know what it is to totally rearrange one's personal life that seems to be doing fine, left untouched, but yet be willing to answer God's call. Continue. Another one, I see like a firing thing. Okay. Taking on a pastorship is truly a change of lifestyle and a required consecration to God. It is also a blessed step in being able to surrender to full service unto the Lord. If not for those individuals whom the Lord has selected and called specifically for positions such as this, the continuance of the gospel work will truly be hampered. We thank God, however, that he has always raised up individuals for particular positions such as this, all for his glory. Now he, he put the bullet. This is the bullet. <laughs> Consecrated moves into full-time services for the Lord definitely affect our secular jobs and schedules as they had been before. To what degree you will be able to continue in a job position other than pastor, I do not know. These are things that the individual must take into account and as the Lord's leading on. There is quite a variation throughout our ranks and regard to whether a pastor works or not. The locations and situations all vary. If you do not feel this is something you will want to immediately resign from after taking on the position of pastor, then that will be fine with me. Still a letter from Brother Dwight. You can approach it that way if you'd like to see how the Lord will lead from there. I think this set of letters change the course of life of this young person for eternity and for better. That young man who was a teenager is now going to be 60 this year. Amen. And that young man, the Lord is still helping that young man Amen. to still serve on, Amen. to still continue. Amen. Yes, when that young man started, it was like I, the young man loved the job. He loved his job so much that he decided, I'm not going to, uh, now, nah, okay, fine. I, 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 missed, I, missed, I missed it, I missed it, I missed it, I missed it, I missed it. So this young man continued to still be running between his church as a pastor and his job. He didn't want to resign because he loved that job so much. Just a little, is a, just a little bit now to get that which is aspiring to be, a full professor. And then it was just impressed upon his heart, no, you must leave. You know, I can testify that the Lord is faithful. Amen. That young man, by the special grace of God, is standing before you. Amen. 
of what the Lord himself has done. Leaving everything, I still have my students getting in touch with me, asking for my help about this and that, supervising PhD students, and I tell them, ask me about Genesis and Romans now. All those theories are gone. I, will, I leave that to other people to deal with. I don't deal with anything like that again. And the Lord God of heaven, I don't think if I've remained to even be a full professor, I will have all that the Lord himself has done for me and has given me. The life that gives all to the Lord is a testimony in terms of what the Lord is able to do and can do, especially for these you young people that has everything before you, that you can just say, God, here is my life. Take it. Use it the way you like. I remember that happened about 15, 16 years ago now. We didn't, we, we, were, we were still paying, if I remember correctly, Isaac and um, Afia will remind me, we were still managing, because we have so many students, we were still managing to pay for double glazing that we did in this church. We were still yet to finish these two doors that we started with at that time. But if you look back and say, God, you are faithful. Yes. God, you are wonderful. Yes. God is great. Yes. The life that is given to him, when he say we multiply, when I was working, it took a long time actually before God gave me a house. God has given me houses, and I don't take salary from the church. Young people, this God of this great gospel we are telling you is real, yes. and he will bless you. Yes. If you will just say, God, whatever you want. Whatever you want. They said we should be um, um, even put our shoe outside there and come inside. Whatever they say. God, whatever they say. God, whatever they say. God will honor you for that. God will bless you for that. It's your own we are telling you. It's for God's blessing. None other thing other than blessing. What the Lord has planned to do for us this year. This year God is going to put an end to all failures. Amen. All disappointments, Amen. all the hula balloons, and all disturbances to our spiritual progress Amen. in the name of Jesus. Right from the beginning of this year, God is giving us that secret. Yield, 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 give way. Let God have his own way. Sign that blank check today. You can just even take a sheet of paper. Physically, you can do that. Just sign it. And as you go on your knees, you say, God, it's blank. Write whatever you want. Anything that you want, write on it. By your grace, I will do it. Amen. By the special grace of God, I'm encouraging you. After you've prayed very well, be sure we have this tract available. It has more to tell you about a surrender, a complete surrender to God that I want to advise you that you take. James 4, 8 says, draw near to God, and the Lord will draw near to you, and the Lord will bless you abundantly. Let's go on our knees and pray and tell God that, God, I want to surrender. From now on, no more argument. From now on, no more fighting. From now on, no more talk of war. From now on, oh, Lord, I surrender. Oh, Lord, I surrender. Make year 2016 a year of complete surrender. A year that I want to go all the way. A year that I don't want to see myself as anything. A year that I will yield to God completely. And you will see what the Lord will do for you in year 2016. God bless you as you pray. Be sure you pray very well and be sure you take that tract after you've prayed very well. God bless you.